So during my research, I took all the ingredients of this product and I put it into EWG's Cosmetic Ingredients Database, which basically will tell you in a numeric form, I will put the chart over here, there's a one through 10, and one, one and two is green, and that means the best, that means that it's clean. And then three, four, five, and six are orange, which means eh, uh, not so good. Obviously, as you get closer to five and six, it's a little bit more toxic, a little, a little bit more hazardous for you to be using, according to their standards. And then seven through 10 are the worst, and you basically should definitely not be using these products. And the way that they break it down is they put down, you know, this number system that I just explained to you. And then they also talk about the amount of research and they use credible resources like Harvard, so on and so forth, like true scholarly research, not like Susan, sorry, not Susan Yara, but I was just using the name Susan, not like Sally from Wisconsin. These are like actual doctors who really know what they're talking about and actual research to back up this website, which is amazing. They basically say how much research they have. So it'll say like good, fair, bad which is great because I like to, I, I like to know how much research is behind this opinion of these scale numbers like do you guys have a lot of research and sometimes it's it's kind of scary to find out about a product and you can basically see through the research and the way that they have this website set up is that some ingredients aren't even that research and there isn't that much pro or product information or sorry um, ingredient information about certain products and that's a little bit murky as I explained in previous videos you know we do have really weird laws in beauty and cosmetics and regulations in this country so definitely I would I would check out what you what you guys are putting on your skin it could be very informative I will link the EWG's cosmetic database below in my description box so I do recommend that you check that out one of the main ingredients it's actually I believe number three or four on the ingredients list is PEG. As I've explained in other videos, PEGs are very bad and they're known to be a possible carcinogen. And it's actually a part, PEGs in general, are part of the Dirty Dozen list, which is a list of 12 products that you basically should try to avoid at all costs. Sorry, not 12 products, 12 ingredients you want to try to avoid at all costs that are in your products. So this exact PEG for this product is a level three in terms of the, the numeric list that I showed you earlier. So this ingredient comes a little bit later in the ingredients list, and this one got me tripped up a little bit. This is urea. So if you don't know anything about urea, urea is actually found in urine, hence the name. And it, so it is naturally occurring, but it is made synthetically oftentimes. And urea is really good for preventing dry skin. I have KP, so I used to always be looking for products with urea in them. It's something that I seeked out. So to hear that there's a lot of evidence actually about urea not being good for you, it kind of, it made me concerned because it's like, oh gosh, I've been looking for this for, for, for years, basically my whole life, because I've dealt with KP my whole life. And I will do a video about that at some point. But yeah, it just really freaked me out. And it just shows you that, you know, you should really be researching your ingredients and your products. On EWG's list, urea comes in at a scale one through three, depending on the usage. So some of the things that this product can do is it can cause irritation, redness, and it can cause pain in certain areas, and it can actually lead to respiratory issues. I will not be using urea anymore. So the next ingredient that is worrisome is called sodium benzoate, and this comes on a scale one through three, again, depending on the usage, and it says that there's a fair amount of research in terms of the research backing their claims. And this, which I found very interesting, I'm not sure if you guys know, but you should watch a doc documentary called Stink, but we have a lot of ingredients that are legally allowed in the United States, and some of the ingredients are banned, most of them are banned around the world. We're actually known as like the dumpster for ingredients because we have the most lax laws. We actually don't have any laws. <laughs> um, we have some laws, but we have, we really don't have many for cosmetics and, and ingredients. So basically we, we're putting a lot of stuff on our bodies that you know go, penetrates through our skin and goes inside of us and we don't really know what they're doing. Other countries have focused on exploring these ingredients and trying to protect their people. I wish America would do the same thing. Um, definitely not under this administration, that will not be happening. But this is actually banned in Japan. And according to Healthline.com, which I will include the link below too, sodium benzoate is potentially dangerous because it converts to benzene, which is a known carcinogen. So yeah, no bueno. So the last ingredient in this guy's formulation that got me bugging is something, another one with a weird name. And this one is phenol, 
phenoxythanol. I believe that's how you pronounce it. So this is another preservative and this also is restricted in Japan. So this means it's completely banned in Japan because they believe that it could be potentially unsafe. There's also a fair amount of research to back these claims. Another scary fun fact is if you're pregnant, you definitely can't have this ingredient at all. And there was actually a nipple cream for moms called Mommy's Bliss that had this ingredient in it and it had to be completely banned. This was in 2008 and was completely recalled and yeah, so not good. So again, no thank you to all of that and this is why I'm moving forward and I have already thankfully found a good dupe. And the product is called Bloom Effects. That's the name of the brand. All right, chicas, that is it for this one. I am so happy to be back. I hope that you guys like this video. I hope that you guys learned a bit about Neod and I can't wait to see you on my next video. And I can't wait to have the Bloom Effects so I can do a video on that. So stay tuned for that. Please, please, please like and subscribe. I am a very small channel. I buy all this stuff myself. I am not sponsored. So any support really, really helps. And I hope to see you in the next one. Until next time, chicas. Mwah. Besos.